welcome to the new fishing channel. Let's go fishing. I'm Chris Ponsford and today I've come to the beautiful Warwickshire Avon to try and catch some chub. I might get lucky and even catch a barbel. I'm going to be using baits you can get from a supermarket for probably a fiver. A little bit of cheese, some sweet corn and some luncheon meat. You don't need fancy baits to catch fancy fish. On that note, let's go fishing. Well, I've just got here. It's a summer's day, so it's actually forecast to be quite warm today. So I've actually taken my top off actually now because it's quite warm. But we're expecting it to be a lot warmer later on. But this particular swim I've selected today is one of my favourites. I've fished it before and caught a few fish from it. It's a swim where there's lots of chub and barbel. They tend to live in that fast run and there's some willow trees going into the water which is providing natural cover and before the run part of the swim which is gravel we've got uh, lots of weeds in the water stick ups as we call them but the and cabbages well some people call them pandocks around here but either way it's got good flow we're not far from a weir so the swim itself is probably only two to three foot deep and the fish know all about the cover that's where they like living and any time a boat comes through, that's where they'll probably dive under and then when the boat's gone by, they'll come back. So my plan is, is to introduce some bait, maybe some pellets, maybe some hemp, maybe some sweet corn into the swim first while I set my gear up and then give it a chance to settle and then we'll give it a go. Now what I will do, I'll just go back up the bank in a minute and we'll show you all the baits we're going to be using. Now, a lot of people's favourite attractor for barbel and chub is this stuff here. This is natural hemp and it actually comes in a tin, but you, you can boil it up yourself, soak it. But natural hemp is probably the go-to, number one favourite for people introducing it into a swim to try and attract chub and barbel. So I'd be remiss if I didn't bring some of this along with me today. Now this one, this is good old sweet corn. Sweet corn probably catches more fish than anything. Again, we'd be silly not to bring some along. That can be used on the hook or introduced loose or through a bait dropper. The main bait will be the spam. I will also use some cheese because there's not many chub that won't eat a piece of cheese. Not many chub or barbel will turn down a piece of bread. We will be introducing some pellets there either through a bait dropper or through loose feed. So those are my baits. Let's go fishing. Is I'm going to use a catapult and I'm going to use what I've mixed, mixed together there and I'm going to fire that into the swim and as we've just explained, we've got a lovely line of bushes. We've got gravel in between all the stick ups and the pandocks and the fish. We want to attract them from out of the cover into our main swim where we'll be rolling some bait through there. Some of that lovely spam. So my next job will be to fire someone with a catapult. I'll fire it towards the upstream end of the swim. And the idea is, It'll work its way down through the swim and will attract any fish that are downstream as well. So we do that before we start fishing. And the idea is we want the fish to settle on a bit of bait and then we'll introduce our hook bait to them and see if they take it. I'm using braid today with a mono hook length. And the idea of the braid is because I'm rolling the meat and I've got a very sensitive rod, it's um, it's actually a hand-built rod by Andy Slewa, and it's a 1.6 test curve, 11 foot long, with a lovely middle to tip action and very absorbent. Now these fish, when we hook them, are lively. They know where all the weeds are, where all the snags are, so we've got to bully them. So I've got some braid on here, which is actually 18 pound braid. And uh, Attached to that, I've got a hook length, which is 11 pounds in breaking straight, which is uh, Preston's mono. And I've got uh, a discontinued seamless hook now, size six, but I've still got a few of them, but they're rather good. Um, 
Attached to the end of the braid, I've got literally a swivel, size eight swivel, and I put a treble A or a swan shot just directly above it, which gives me a little bit of extra weight to flicking it out. I will take weight off or put weight on according to how it's fishing. I've also brought some Olivets uh, to use if I want to, but the basic setup will be a piece of meat on the hook, just literally straight hooked. We've introduced a little bit of bait. Uh, hopefully there's a few fish mooching about in the swim now that that bait's gone in. I'm not gonna introduce any more before I fish. And then the next job will be to cast in. I'll probably put some chest waders on because this particular peg is very snaggy and I need to wade out a little bit. And then I'll be ready for action. We've just popped in the first cast. So we're just bumping our way around the swim. We've cast out the top end of the swim. And so far I haven't felt any, any take. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just slowly tighten up now. So that looks like that piece of meat's come off, which is fine because I'll rebate that. And of course each, each little bit of meat that goes in is a little bit more bait to attract them. And I just tucked in the top of my chest waders. I've got, I've got this little, these bits of meat here. So I'm just breaking off a piece, pop that back in there. And literally I'm just hooking this on through the meat there and pushing it round. So the hook is buried inside the meat and that's it. So we're gonna do the same again. I'm gonna cast it towards the top of the swim, let out a bit of a bow of line. That's it, so there we go. So the idea is that that's sinking now. I'm watching the line, if the line suddenly tightens up and I might make adjustments as to uh, split shot I've got on there. So now it's just, just slightly stuck there. There's probably some weed out there or something like that. We can just hold it there. That's okay. So we just reel that back. See if the meat's still on. If the meat's come off, we'll put another piece on. It's quite a dynamic method to be fair. And the fact that we're wearing chest waders, this is quite shallow water, you know, I'm a good swimmer. Just re-hooking another piece of meat on directly onto it. That's ready to go out again. Morning. How are you today? Good stuff, good stuff. Ah, yes, the gentleman's on his mobile phone. Don't we all live on our phones these days? But actually, if I was him, I'd put it away and enjoy the scenery because we come to beautiful places. This is a stunning place. You can hear the birds as well. And uh, that's quite interesting. The boat's just gone through. So it'd be interesting to see how far the fish go as to whether or not we get a bite this run through. So I'm not going to be waiting 10 minutes. I'm just going to go straight back in. I don't think the fish will have gone far. So I've chucked it across into that slack again. And hopefully I'm trying to get it to run through close to those trees where we might, we might pick up a barbel. So I'm going to let a bit of line out and we're sort of effectively almost upstream ledgering now. I'm just going to hold on to it like so. And very often the fish will grab it because they shouldn't feel, they shouldn't feel pressured because it's literally not a great big heavy lead landing on their head. I'm on, I've got a fish on. Got a fish. This feels like a decent fish. Got to play it pretty hard. I don't know if it's a chub or a barbel. I think it's a chub. Yeah, it looks like a chub. Whoa, whoa, here we go. You keep him coming all the time. He's gonna go for them weeds. There he is, there he is. Getting into those weeds. We'll just keep that hard pressure on him and we'll drag him through. Look at that, there we go. That's a nice fish, isn't it? Oh, look at that bad boy. Well done, the ponds. Look at that. Well, that's the power of the meat and the power of the ponds. Look at that, he's, he's a great big thing. Look at that. Wow. Well, you didn't expect one that quick, did you? Well, you see, 
This is what you get when you come with a great method on a beautiful river, you catch a lovely, lovely chub like that. No need to weigh him, but he's looking really fat actually. Looks like he probably hasn't even spawned. What a beautiful fish to start the day. So I'm just gonna fire a few more pellets in. Do any harm? See if we can persuade a few to come up the trail. That should be uh, enough. I'm gonna try a little piece of bread on the hook this chunk. Just had a run through on the cheese. Didn't get one that time, but that's not to say we won't get one, but I'm just gonna try a nice big piece of bread. So. Not many chub can resist a bit of bread, so let's see if that uh, produces us a fish. Get back into my little spot. And a bit of bread, eh? Good old bread. Yeah, it feels like a lively chub. He's up on the surface, we're not mucking about. Ooh, keep him up, keep him up, Ponzi. Keep him up, don't let him get behind them stick-ups. Don't let him get behind them stick-ups. Here she comes, look at that, eh? Look at that, eh? Another lovely chub. Woo! Well done, Mr. Pons! And that's great, isn't it? Cool. There's a summer fishing at its best, isn't it? Absolutely super. That one was on the bread. Yeah, bit of bread. Size so six hook, a couple of shot on it and just trundle it through the swim, watch for a bite, woof, boom. There you go. <laughs> I think that one's gone back, boy. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's catch another. All right, well, that last one, that came on a nice piece of bread. So all I've done, I've just torn a bit of bread off there and I've actually folded it over there and then what I'm doing there, I'm just going to pinch it on to the top of the hook there. And then it leaves quite a nice big piece for it there, where the hook, the hook's proud. Just a bit further across. be the best one of the day. Look at that big brute, eh? Hey? Whoa! Look at him! He's a monster, isn't he? That's beautiful. Mm. I'll give him a Rex hunt, eh? <laughs> well, well, well. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a really good tip. Bit of cheddar cheese over the pellet, and I chucked that in, and bang! He was on there, boy. I'll have a bit of that. So, I mean, that was a uh, that's a super result, isn't it? Look at that. Doesn't that look fantastic? Look at his happy days. There he goes. Oh, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite. Oh, 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 oh. Something having a, 
I mean, I'm having a little look. Wow. This has definitely been the method. That cheese paste. And with the chub, they, they sometimes mouth it, like they did then. And of course, because just as easy be a barbel picks it up as well, because there's barbel in this swim as well. We saw one earlier, flash on the gravels was a great big thing. In fact, that was a monster of a barbel, but the chub had been really big. But I mean, really, could you, could you ask to be doing anything better than this today, you know? Sat in a t-shirt, these are the days you dream about in the winter when you're sat there freezing with all your coats on. And with this, I mean, it's just been the most fabulous day, really. Overcast, but nice and warm, not excessively warm. Next week, they reckon it's going to be about 26, 27 degrees. Actually, my missus said it's going to be 40 degrees. I don't know where she got that one from. Might be in Madrid. But anyway, in uh, good old Warwickshire, it's probably 26 degrees. But at the moment, if it, oh, 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 shoot. Battling through the weeds here. Come here, come here, come here. Is this a big chub or is it, what's this? What have we got this time? Yeah, another, another great ball. Look at the size of that brute. Wow, oh my God. Ooh, that's the biggest yet. That is huge. That is massive. Look at that boy. Oh, that is the biggest one of the day. Look at the size of that brute. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Hang on, I'll just, uh, I'll just unhook him. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Goodness me. What a fantastic fish. Well, we're going to try and catch a couple more, but I don't catch one bigger than that today. Well, I shan't be complaining, will I? Okay, I think I'll just slip this one back now. Well, I've just cast back out. So, um, again, I'm touch ledging. This is a method that, you know, a lot of anglers don't use because a lot of anglers put the rod on the rod rest and uh, wait for a, a three foot twitch if it's a barbel bite, but they're not always three foot twitches. And with my method, no, that's, I'll, I'll correct that. With this method, which is an old time serve method, touch ledgering, you can feel everything. You can feel the line suddenly go slack. You can feel the little bumps as sometimes they pick the bait up, you know. And so you're immediately, you're completely in touch with it. So it's a terribly simple method, but the key to it is you need to be comfortable. So here I'm sat here with that chair. I'm just sat on the natural bank using this pair of uh, chest waders. And I'm sat here I can keep the rod perfectly still. I can look all around. I can listen to the birds, watch the birds, watch the water. And all the time, the finger is telling me whether or not I've got a bite. And if it suddenly goes slack, or it suddenly pulls tight, I can react to it. So the method I'm doing is actually a, a running ledger I'm using today. And another little tip I'll give you, is you don't necessarily need to use great big heavy weights. I've got probably less than an ounce on here, which I'm flicking across to the far bank, and it's holding nicely. If you use two and three ounce leads, like a lot of people do, oh, oh, there's a little touch then, a little touch. Um, it's scaring the fish when you're casting it in and they may spook out the peg. Ideally, you want it to land as lightly as possible. And with this particular setup, with this bit of cheese over the pellet, what it does, it provides a load of smell and attraction so they can home in. And even if they take the cheese off, I've still got my pellet on there to attract a fish. So easy method, it's called a running ledger, literally, as we've just shown you, in one of our cutaways, the ledger, the weight runs up and down, the line goes onto top of a swivel and the hook length below that, and that's all you need. That's as simple as it comes. It's a shortish hook length 
and keeping it simple. Now all the baits we've used today, they're all cheap baits. You can go and buy these from supermarkets, buy the pellets, a tin of Spam, a bit of cheese, a bit of sweet corn. You can buy bait here for probably, what, some, a tin of meat now, anything from two pounds to three pounds. I prefer Spam, but you can buy cheaper ones than that. A bag of sweet corn, maybe a pound. A block of cheese, that was £2.30 off the co-op last night and I've got bait there for all day. I could just use that alone and actually mould that round the pellet or round, you know, just round the hook if I wanted to. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on again, I'm in again. Oh, look at him go, look at him go, look at him go. Oh my God, he's going for it. Oh my God, he is going for it too. Oh. Now, as you can see, I'm not hanging about with this, which I'm bossing it. You can see him on the surface down there. He's coming towards these weeds. Uh, I'm not mucking about. I can't afford to muck about. You've got to show him who's boss. And there you go. It's as quick as that, but that was the way to do the job. Wow. So as you can see, the touch ledring has worked a treat. Another splendid job. We're doing all right today, aren't we? Look at that. A bit smaller than the last one, but who cares? It's another nice fish. But the key to that one was you get the bite, you hook the fish, you can't muck about, you've got to get it in. I'm just going to pop him back in the water. There we go. And off he goes. Well, I reckon that was pretty acceptable. We've just, uh, just returned that last chub, actually. And, and the whole point about today is, uh, is we've, we've fished budget baits. We've actually bought baits from the co-op last night. I bought some cheese. I bought some Spam. Um, I bought some, I had some sweet corn. I had some from Sonyu, but you know, that doesn't matter about that. You can buy a bag of sweet corn for a pound. The whole idea really is to be able to come fishing somewhere like this on the river for about five or six quid. You don't have to go and spend 20 quid on maggots, casters, you know, you don't need to come with tons and tons of ground bait. The methods I fished have been very, very simple, simple running ledger setups with small light weights, decent size hook, size six barbless hook, just on a short monofilament filament hook length, you know. So the gear I've used has been a fixed ball reel, 11 foot softish action rod, very nice. I've used a pair of chest waders, been absolutely fantastic really. And the fish we've caught today have been brilliant. Great big fish, some of them. Some chub there that I'm genuinely proud of catching. You know, they've been absolutely marvellous. So this is, a, this is a local stretch to me on the River Avon. Uh, one that's on a you know, club ticket. So we've had a brilliant day. And there's lots of club tickets you can get, you know, get waters you can fish on for 20, 30 pounds a year. So my whole point to you today is you don't need particularly fancy gear. You don't need particularly fancy baits. You can use simple tactics. You can come to wild places. I've had a wonderful day. Seen kingfishers here, sedge warblers. You know, I know otters come up and down this stretch. Some anglers don't like that, but what a, what a wonderful place. Middle of summer. I treasure these days in the winter when it's freezing cold and I'm here and I'm enjoying it, getting the suntan. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. We've loved love fishing today you got another go see how you can get on and hopefully you've learned a few tips that will stand you in good stead so i'm chris ponsford saying bye for now we'll see you soon and we'll bring you another program